So the Christian response to what's going on, now I'm not going to suggest that what I have to say right now is definitive or covers everything, but I think it's so helpful to, to, have, uh, to, to take a, a pause and look at Scripture and think about what God might want us to, to think about right now. So I had a whole sermon ready on Matthew 5, which uh, is now on, on, in mothballs because God has his own plans, right? And we need to respond in the right way when, when things come up. So today we're going to talk a bit about the Christian response. We're going to be focused on this particular scripture, which I think is particularly helpful for us. John 16, verse 33. We're going to look more at that a little bit later. But I love, I love the spirit of what John is saying here. What Jesus is saying, in this world you will have trouble. And we can all say a hearty amen. amen. <laughs> right? But that's not the end of the sentence. It's not the end of what's going on. But take heart. Right? Because we have Jesus with us. So uh, let's, um, let's have a look at four things today. And that is to consider that prayer is a, a much better alternative to, than, than anxiety or, or panic. Is to consider our own response of empathy and compassion for people who are suffering. Then to consider what actions we might be able to take to actively practically help people where we can. And then fourthly, to consider what opportunities might this be giving us for the kingdom of God, for the gospel to help people. So let's, let's consider these four things today. And I realize, um, prayer in place of anxiety. All right, our first scripture, James chapter 5, verses 13 to uh, 14. Is anyone among you in trouble? Well, a lot of people are. What do we do when we're in trouble? Our first response? Pray. pray. Not tweet about it, but pray. Okay. Uh, not even WhatsApp about it. Uh, is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. It's so good to be able to gather and sing today. I don't know about you, but it takes my mind off the things that are not that profitable right now and helps me to get focused on the right things. Maybe next week we won't be able to gather like this. Maybe. But still, you and I can sing songs of praise. I, I, I've been singing a song at the beginning of my morning prayer time every, every day the last few days. Because I, I sing usually um, the, uh, the communion song when I survey. Because it gets my, my eyes surveying the cross at the beginning of my day. Uh, but maybe you want to sing a song regularly uh, or sing through some songs. But anyway, it helps us to sing. Is anyone among you sick? Well, hopefully none of us are sick yet, but it could happen with this virus. And if it does, then we pray. We pray ourselves. We pray for other people in that situation. And let's help each other by praying over them, anointing them with oil. Uh, there's, there's something for us to do there. Prayer in place of anxiety and the scripture that, okay, stole uh, uh, off me earlier. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> but in Jesus I forgive. So, is any one of you in trouble? Let, him pr let them pray. No, wrong verse. That's the last verse. Let your gentleness, let's go back a bit too. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The, the, key, the key words here are those four next words. The Lord is near. Because the magic, in a sense, isn't in prayer. The magic, in a sense, is the fact that the Lord is with us, which makes prayer real and meaningful. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Now, we need to be realistic. We feel anxious uh, from time to time. And I, I don't believe this scripture is saying that to feel anxious about something or somebody is a sin. But what do we do when that anxiety comes? What's our next response is the question. So I think when we're anxious, instead of Instead of dwelling in anxiety land, instead of that, we, in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So what do we want? What do we need? And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, and this, this phrase is no more meaningful than now, that we are able, as people of faith, to have peace in a way that the world cannot ever experience and understand. Peace does not come just because of you happen to have the last bottle of hand gel left in the shop. You managed to get it. That's not where peace comes from. 
It doesn't. It doesn't come from anything like that. It, it, it comes from God. That peace is, is supernatural. Really, it is. And that will guard our hearts and your minds, hearts and minds, because our hearts and minds are drawn to things that we fear and, and are dominated by that. But if we pray, then our hearts and minds are drawn to Jesus and we have enough peace to be able to handle it well, but also to help other people, because this is a great opportunity for us to help other people. Um, I love this psalm. I think also is a, a good reference for us. Psalm 112. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Wow. Well, I hope this could be true of me through a time like this. I hope this is my heart, my spirit. I, I really hope. And this is how we can be. It's an opportunity for us. Um, one of the things you'll know that we're being told to do is wash our hands a lot and sing happy birthday twice, is it? Yeah. Something like that. Well, I, I wonder if we might find something better to do than sing happy birthday. Yeah. Do Lord, do remember me. The chorus of do Lord. That's catchy. Sing, sing that chorus twice. It's about that. But maybe you want to sing a verse of a song. Or maybe, maybe recite a scripture in your head. Maybe that one from Philippians 4 or recite a scripture while you're washing your hands. That might help us to wash our hearts and minds in God, right? Because we, we need that to have the right perspective. So the first thing is prayer in place of anxiety. Secondly, empathy and compassion for the suffering. Now, Jesus demonstrates empathy and compassion in abundance, right? That's one of the reasons we love him. He has that empathy and that compassion. For example, in uh, Matthew 9, when he saw the crowds, who, of course, were full of needs, he had compassion on them, for they were harassed, helpless. That is the feeling for a lot of people right now. We're harassed. A lot of it is being harassed by bad news in the media. But nonetheless, there's that feeling. And helpless, because what can you do? Well, okay, you might be able to work from home or something, but really, what can we do? Like sheep without a shepherd, Jesus felt for people who were harassed and helpless. It's important that we do our best to pray and ask God to help us to be uh, compassionate for people. And you know the story in Mark 5, when the woman is healed and she knows what's happened she comes and falls at Jesus's feet even though she's trembling with fear and tells him the whole truth how she touched his the hem of his garment and then he says you can go your faith has healed you go in peace he wanted her to feel that sense of peace even though she'd been healed she wasn't yet at peace it was the encounter with Jesus that gave her that peace and be freed from your suffering do you sense that it's not just that Jesus is technically doing something good he wants her to know about his love and compassion. He wants her to feel it. So that empathy and compassion for the suffering is something we need to do. One of the things that's part of that is, no, is not, being judge, not passing judgment on other people. People will react differently to this crisis in different ways. There are healthier and less healthy ways to react, but we should be careful not to be condemning of other people and their reactions. We also need to be sure that we're not uh, prejudiced towards people I would imagine this group would not be, but just to mention the point, uh, Penny in her surgery uh, this last week uh, had a complaint from a, another patient waiting in the waiting room because there was a Chinese person in the waiting room. And just their presence was enough for them to raise a complaint and say, this person should not be allowed in. I got back from the, uh, from the States on Monday and I got, a, uh, I got an Uber from the airport and the chap who picked me up told me that the previous person to me he picked up was South Korean. And he had been refused three taxi rides because they thought, people thought he was Chinese. So he'd booked an Uber, they turned up, and as soon as they saw him, they drove off. <clears throat> Happened three times. He was in the airport for an hour and a half waiting for uh, this chap to come. It's really important. I mean, and this South Korean was not even Chinese, but South Korean. And he hadn't been in China for several years. And he'd just come back from Edinburgh, from where he'd been on, to a meeting. It's not like he was yeah. come back from China or somewhere. So... 
But this judging by appearances is something to be careful of because if we judge by appearances, we cannot be empathetic and we cannot be compassionate. And Jesus never did that, never judged by appearances. So empathy and compassion for those who are suffering. Um, Oh, I went farther than I meant to. Well, there you go. You're all ahead of me. So thirdly, action to comfort where we can. Now, where it's wise to do so. So we shouldn't be getting ourselves involved with situations that would put not just ourselves at risk so much, but the people we might affect who might be vulnerable at risk. However, surely there are things we can do, actions we can take. It might just be being on the phone to people. Um, But we need to be doing what we can. A couple of scriptures that may help us. 2 Corinthians 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So as we find that peace from fruit through prayer and the comfort of the presence of Christ, then we, we would want to pass that on to other people by helping them in some way or other. Um, in Matthew chapter 14, Jesus, when he heard what had happened, withdrew by boat, solitary place. Hearing this, the crowds followed him uh, from the towns. He landed, saw a large crowd. He had compassion on them and healed their sick. He got involved. So where can we get involved is one of the, one of the questions. One of the, there are several things we can do. One thing we can do is pray more. You might have a bit more time. Maybe if you're working from home, you're not commuting. You've got more time. Maybe if you're off work, you've got more time. Maybe even you're ill, you've got more time. You could pray more. You could read the Bible more. You could send messages to people to encourage them. You could ring people up. I mean, there are things we can do even if we're remote, as in we're not physically with them. What can you do? Praying for others, asking people, what can I pray about for you? Um, I have an elderly neighbor opposite. I'm going to be talking to her this week and asking her, what could I do? Is there anything you need? Uh, That kind of thing. And I think also having a generous spirit. Uh, We're we're familiar with the stories about hoarding right right now. Uh, This isn't an exact, I can't use this parable precisely theologically to this point, but the spirit of it applies, right? Of the, the rich man who said to himself, I'm rich, oh, what shall I do? I'll st- I've got no place to store my crops. I haven't got enough room for all the toilet roll that I've got from Costco. This is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns, build bigger ones, and there I'll store my surplus grain. I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life, eat. Easy, eat, drink, be merry, don't worry about everything else and everybody else, right? But God said to him, you're a fool. Your life is going to be demanded from you. Who will get what you prepared for yourself? This is how it will be whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich toward God. I think that's the spirit point right there. Is if we have been given, if we have uh, blessings, then we, we must be generous in sharing. That's the only right response for a Christian is to be generous. Be wise about your own needs and your needs of, say, your children. But don't be stingy when you could help somebody else. God will supply what we need. Let's not just uh, hunker down and look after number one. That's not a a Christian response. Um, Lastly, making the most of every opportunity. Uh, We're not going to read through this whole passage, but I'm just putting it up there. This is Paul and Silas in Philippi in the jail in Acts 16. I guess we all know the story. Um, The thing that inspires me about this is how they saw difficulties as being an opportunity for the gospel. So they're they're arrested, they are attacked, they are stripped, they are beaten and severely flogged. So we're talking open wounds, we're talking blood, we're talking scars. And then they are put into not only prison, but the inner prison in the dark. And their response is to pray and sing in the dark, at midnight, wounded, in pain, with no song books, no song leader, no bill on the guitar. They're just, they're just there. And their response is to sing. I mean, the extraordinary attitude of faith. And, and then what happens? There's an earthquake. They're their chains come off. The jailer comes in and says, what must I do to be saved? They then teach him the Bible, he and his whole household, and they are baptized and rejoice. 
Now, if that's not a good recommendation for singing and praising God, even when things, in the middle of when things are difficult, not after they've been sorted out, but in the middle. That's another good recommendation for, for praising and praying. But the other thing I want to point out is the fact that they did not get inward focused here. It wasn't about them. As soon as they saw that their, their persecution and their pain was the door through which someone could be saved, they jumped on it. Come on, Jailer, let's sit down right now and let's talk about this. They were willing to do that. They didn't say, oh, no, no, go and call the magistrates and get our sentence revoked or set us free so we can leave so we can escape the angry mob that beat us in the first place. No, that wasn't their priority. Their priority was, well, you want to know how to be saved? Then let's have a chat. What time was it? Who knows? Two in the morning? Three in the morning? Maybe? Sometime? After midnight, but before daybreak, we know from the, from the passage. I love that spirit. And I think that's the right spirit for us in making the most of every opportunity to share about the comfort that Jesus has given us for, to those especially who don't yet know him. You might be given opportunities to talk about your faith this week. Let's look for them. Let's be alert to them. Look for the Holy Spirit opening doors for conversations. Perhaps offer to pray for people will be something to do. Fundamentally, in the end, what we don't know about the virus, and there's a lot we don't know about the virus, what we don't know about the virus is nothing like as important as what we do know about Jesus. And that's a lot more significant. John 16, 33. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Ultimate victory is, it does belong to Jesus. It's with him. We don't need to fear and we know that nothing in this world can separate us from the love of Christ. From Romans 8, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword or virus? None of these things separate us from his love. It is possible that the virus will damage or kill people we care about. It's possible it could even happen in this congregation. The virus may devastate your body, but it cannot devastate your relationship with Jesus. It can't take that away. And that's something for us to hold on to and to celebrate. We are really lucky to have that. It really is sobering to see what's going on around the world. Uh, it's sobering uh, to, to think about what could happen. Uh, next, this next week, tomorrow, Penny and I are actually on holiday and uh, we had planned to go and visit my parents. But I rang my, talked to my father yesterday and said, we, we won't be coming. Uh, my mother's immune system is shot to pieces with all the drugs she's had to take to deal with her rheumatoid arthritis over the years. And she's got a weak heart. Um, although Penny and I are, are, feel well at the moment, we, we don't know what we're carrying. And we can't take the risk of infecting my mother especially, but also my father. So we have to make, we have to change plans. And, and, and that's just, you know, we, we're in a difficult, difficult period uh, for, for us all. So it's sobering to see that. And it's sobering to see not just the physical impact, but the emotional yeah. impact it's having on a lot of people, including people of faith. Uh, I was talking to a, a person two days ago who was beside themselves with worry and convinced that the Chinese government had done this deliberately in a laboratory to whatever. Um, I'm not terribly fond of conspiracy theories on that level, but the point is not whether or even or whether or not the Chinese government had done such a thing. The point is our reaction of, of, of hopefully not so much fear and panic, but prayer. So I think we need to be, as best we can, we need to be rooted in the reality Let's not be trite about this like it's no big deal and, oh, we just need to have more faith. And Let's not be superficial. Yeah. This is a really big deal. But on the other hand, let's, let's, let's be actively considering how we can hold on to Jesus being more important to us than the other challenges we have right now. Because the challenges we have right now are temporary. They are temporary. They're not going to last forever. 
So what I'd like to do to finish with today is to have some time of prayer. Uh, I think it'd be good for us to pray together uh, as a group. But before we do that, I was thinking maybe we could uh, think about what to pray about. So what might be some of the things we could pray about? Can we have some sharing here? What would we like to pray about either generally or specifically? What are some things we could be praying about? Patricia. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. To be thankful and praying for those who've got the virus. Yeah. That God's will is done. The God's will is done. Yeah. That's, we sometimes forget that. And we don't know what it is half the time. Exactly. Yeah. Congregations around the world, um, they are in very different circumstances. Uh, at this point, as far as I know, the church in, we have a couple of congregations in Italy, and I don't believe any of them have the virus at this point, but not, they can't meet together as a church. And as far as we know, our fellowships in China uh, are all well, uh, as far as we know at this point. But it's inevitable there will be some cases somewhere. Um, if you want to know what the International Churches of Christ sort of response is, then do check the Disciples Today website. There is information on there. But yes, thank you, Leon. Uh, other things? I think that each country is in a bit of a different circumstance. And some people even here are reacting to what's happening in other countries, which have different structures and different setups. And I think I, I, my prayer this week would be been for UK citizens to react to the UK government's advice and not react to what they're seeing in other countries because we have different strengths and weaknesses, and we have different infrastructures and different support systems. And Good the point. government is doing the best that it can with our systems and our structures. And we should, we should trust our rulers, we should trust our leaders. And pray for them. Pray for, right? them. pray for kings and all those in authority. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yes, absolutely. I think um, of all the frontline health workers, yeah. Yeah. Very much so, yeah. Pray for Penny yeah. <laughs> She's, and, and others there in that front line. Thank you. Yeah, Simon. Yeah. But it opens up hearts yeah. to God. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for the, for the vulnerable people. Yeah. And, you know, I, it's funny, I was listening to the radio the other day and, and they were talking about how, um, you know, anybody over 60 is more vulnerable. And I thought, oh, that's okay, I'm not 60. And then I thought, <laughs> and then I thought two things. Firstly, I thought, that's not a good thing to think. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, hang on, I am 59. I'm quite, I'm quite close. <laughs> so I, actually, that's a lot more. actually uh, yeah, <laughs> vulnerable people, yeah. What they call old. Old. I don't know what old is anymore. Who knows? Who knows? But vulnerable is a good way. Yes. No. Health conditions. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Anything else? All right. Well, why don't we? Why don't we take ten minutes to pray? Let me invite, um, could I invite someone to kick us off? Who would like to start? And then, Leon, if you'd like to start, and then I'll leave it open for 10 minutes. Anybody can pray, and then I'll finish off in 10 minutes. Father, it's, uh, it's good that we can come to you right now, because we don't know really where else to turn. And Father, we pray you give us a peace that passes understanding, and give us compassion for the people who are suffering. Uh, give us wisdom to know how to react. Uh, give us strength beyond what we can normally bear for these situations. And give us, give us w w the energy we need to be able to, to navigate through all of this. And we pray, Father, you'll help us to keep our eyes on Jesus. We thank you, Father, that we are able to be convinced 
that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you that this is true. We pray it will be our experience. And we ask you for the love and the comfort of Jesus, not only for us, but for all who are suffering right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. It's been good to talk about this together.